Well, hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. Just approaching a freeway here and there's an interchange. So I'm hoping to slide into a green space here between the freeway and a slip lane and camp for the night. It is about rush hour right now, so traffic is fairly relentless, but there should be a break because there's a set of lights up ahead. And then we'll just dart across this slip lane and set up in the trees over there. Should have a break in traffic any moment soon here. Yep, let's go. Okay. And, okay. So, just gonna stop right in here for the moment. And, perfect, I'm, I think I'm pretty well hidden right here. But uh, this is just the first stop. I'm gonna get this backpack off. And uh, this looks like a pretty good spot. Okay, got that big heavy jacket off. I just couldn't fit it in the backpack, so I wore it. Look at these spruce trees. There is awesome coverage underneath these things. And most people are too busy tailgating each other to pay attention about what's going on in the green space here. Wow, this would be a real good one. Holy, that would take some clearing out, but it could be a good thing in the future. All right, just gonna wander around here a little bit. Um, looks like a pretty good spot. Right, I'm seeing trash here already. Looks like there may have been stealth campers over there that weren't too stealthy. Looks like they probably got told to move along. And yeah, bunch of uh, bunch of cleaning supplies. So they probably cleaned up their equipment before they packed up and moved along. So, oh, this actually looks pretty decent right here. Yeah. Calling in under here. I think this is arguably a better spot than the other one. I'm gonna go grab my gear and start making my way over here and give us some more camouflage. Between this spot actually and the other spot, pretty much a toss up, except this one is real close to this lane of traffic there and the other one's further away. So when a car comes careening off, it could squish me here and the other one is just a little bit further away from those nice houses across the road. So we're gonna make tracks for that other spot. Let's go. Okay. Right on. Let's uh, get into the cover of these woods. This is a fine spot, but it's a little exposed. So I'm gonna use this nice stuff. I have a couple different patterns. I'm gonna pick the one that kind of matches the spruce a little better. Let's see, that. this is the winner. And we'll just string this up along there. Then we'll take a peek from the outside and see what it looks like. I think we've got a small break in, nope, oh, I was wrong. Okay, now looks like a good time. And from out here, from where the cars are gonna be traveling, what do we see? Oh, that's perfect. The sun shines behind it a little bit, but we've only got an hour and a half of sunshine left. So that looks pretty good to me. The best thing about places like this is there's no sidewalks, no walking trails, 
and the traffic going by is going at freeway merging speed. So you'd really have to be curious about what's going on in the woods to pull over on a freeway on-ramp and check things out. So I think we should be in for a night of smooth sailing. So for today's shelter, I have to thank John S. for suggesting this and anybody else who's suggested it, is a body bag. Um, actual medical grade body bag. You can get them off of Amazon for about $30. They're waterproof, so that's good. Um, they got a zipper, so that's even better. And uh, yeah, so tonight I'm just gonna crawl into a body bag and that should provide me all the shelter I need from the elements. Perfect, just smells like a tarp. It doesn't have any gross medical smell to it. Um, tells me it's new. Good. Might be a little cold tonight, so I got this sleeping bag liner. Uh, always a good thing to have. It'll add a couple of degrees warmth to this paper thin sleeping bag. It is really soft here on all these spruce needles, but I am going to use the sleeping pad for added insulation value. I originally thought that little automatic inflator was gimmicky and unnecessary, but after six inflations, it's still on those AAA batteries, and I have to say, I'm impressed. I always like tucking the sleeping pad into the sleeping bag. That way it doesn't twist around sideways on me, etc. Yeah. Ha. Can't be Halloween camping without a mummy bag. I'll see myself out. Get the mummy bag in the body bag. for a step two. Got this, uh, there will be blood orange, you know. I'm not good at Halloween stuff, but I'm sure good at uh, enjoying a step two. Mm -hmm. Delish. Mm. Low alcohol too, uh, three and a half percent, because uh, I'm on a diet. Twilight is just beginning, so with the change in lighting, I'll take another peek from the outside and then we're gonna get some dinner started because this will take a few hours at least. Well, well, well. Yeah. That's just fine in my opinion. Spooky Halloween themed foods are tricky. Most of the recipes just seem to be decorating normal food as something spooky. Um, the only one that I really wanted to eat that was suggested, um, the best they could do is a pun, and it's goulash, I know. Um, so, when I was out, I picked up this pot, believe it or not. Um, it's the Sea to Summit X pot. Um, and it pops into a pot, like so. So, I couldn't pass it up because of its stealthy implications. However, I didn't realize you can't fry in it or saute or anything. It's strictly a boiling thing. That doesn't work with browning beef. So fortunately I had a little tiny thing that I can brown up some beef, then we'll just dump it all in and boil it for hours. That's uh, the way it goes. I had to bring my somewhat larger burner because this actually simmers appropriately. That rocket stove on the spaghetti did a number on the bottom of that pan. I'll tell you that. This one should be able to uh, maintain a little more reasonable simmer. 
Unfortunately, I know this road noise is pretty annoying. There's not a whole lot I can do. I'm trying to time the shots in between the traffic and stay as close to the mic as I can here. But uh, that'll subside here in an hour or so when the good people of the world are back with their families cooking their own goulash. Perfect, I even got a lighter. Okay, doesn't sound like a simmer. Ah, oh, yeah, that's gonna do quite okay. Small batches to get them nice and browned. I found this recipe online and it's an instant pot recipe, but it also had stovetop instructions. The instant pot ones said uh, put it on saute or something, brown the beef, saute the veggies, then dump in all the rest of the stuff, push the button, and wait for a few hours. I can probably do a reasonable facsimile here. Mm, smells good. Just got the last little bit of beef ground up here. And I'll deglaze the pan here with some concentrated beef broth and a little water. I like the concentrated stuff because that gives me the option, if I don't use all of it, to use it on a later meal. And pretty much then it's a boil fest for the rest of the night. Doing the one pot boogie. Well, two pots. Pan in a pot. It smells really good. Okay, and uh, first spill of the evening. We're not gonna push our luck any further into the main pot. And let's, there we go, that worked out good. Let's start boiling up a bunch of stuff. Pull out the spruce needles. Veggies are okay, so mix of bell peppers. That looks to be a whole sweet Vidalia onion, that's okay. Oh, it's going to be a veggie laden, uh, oh that's okay, paprika, can't go wrong with paprika, smoked paprika, had to buy it just for this occasion, so it's not even opened yet, smoked paprika, mmm smoky, right on, okay, this is like the main part of the stew, so it looks like I'm really abusing the dish with the paprika, but it's not the case. It relies on this for the flavor. Now, tomato paste, although it looks like toothpaste, it's the perfect thing for camping. It's a little tomato paste. Ditto with the garlic. Salt and pepper we'll tweak later. For the most part, that's about it. Uh, it does want some flour, so give it what it wants. And in goes the rest of this. Uh, concentrate. And the flour probably should have been done as a roux with the vegetables or whatever the case is, but it's camping, right? Not gourmet chef of the day here. Bring to a boil, cover and simmer, and then we'll uh, adjust the recipe as, as taste dictates. Mm, yum, yum. It is. All the hard work is done, and she's simmering. It's gonna be great. It smells fantastic already. Across the main freeway there, there is a house with its lights on and a clear view of me. I didn't expect that side to be exposed, so I'm just going to have to be careful. I don't think I have another camo tarp with me. The goulash is simmering nicely, 
and it's a little darker so we can kind of walk around here there's uh, the main freeway right here behind me and this is the slip lane for the folks that want to get on the freeway going that way and over here there's the uh, overpass thingy there for the folks that want to go that way down the freeway and yeah there's a lot of junk out here look at this Irresponsible stealth campers. You can't just leave that stuff behind. The dinner is still simmering away, and there are a ton of invasive streetlights around here. As right behind me over here, there's uh, that one there, there's all these over here, and I kind of think it's okay for me to turn on a small flashlight so I can see what I'm doing because it shouldn't stand out with all these uh, street lights. Goulash is a meal that takes an awful lot of time uh, to cook. So probably not your best meal to cook when you're stealth camping. All right, we're gonna head on over to that grove of trees and check things out. Oops. I don't even know. The body bag. Um, yeah, it's got uh, three handles on each side. Then it looks like uh, one in the front, probably one on the back. The zipper. Uh, there's two zippers and it opens the whole thing up so I'm hunkered down inside of here uh, the thing is waterproof uh, chemical proof of course it's waterproof uh, it's kind of its job but uh, as morbid as it is this is a pretty cool uh, bivy sack alternative. It actually packs up pretty quick and pretty small in the backpack, so, um, body bag. Well, this cooked down pretty good. I could have boiled it down a little more, I think, but that's pretty good. Um, might not look that good, but it sure does taste good. So I got these uh, fresh baked tray buns and we're gonna scoop some of this into there. And of course, I have to give a huge shout out to the beer donation folks. Um, and I wish you were here with us right now. Mm, cracking delicious step two. Oh my, I'm just spilling chunks of beef all over myself. But uh, yeah, for all the folks that uh, have donated, thank you so, so much. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, I, uh, I probably shouldn't have cooked it so much without stirring it because it's a little bit burned but it's certainly delicious mm. Mm -mm -mm. all right it is time to crawl into the mummy bag then also zip myself up in the body bag Feels warmer already. Excellent. Oh, yes. That's fine. No, no zipper on the inside, so I won't zip it all the way up.
straight on. This body bag is cozy. Um, I'm not zipping it all the way up for obvious reasons, but uh, not quite tired yet, so I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I don't get scared a lot. Um, I'm scared of security guards and police and bears and heights, and that's about it. But I was camping once in my motorhome. And I pulled down to the bottom of this dam um, on Vancouver Island. And I camped for the night. I, I started a huge fire. It was gigantic. And uh, I figured that would scare off any animals. And the thing was like six feet high. And I'd ended up going back into the RV and watching some shows. And then smack on the side of the motorhome. And there was nothing around. There was no trees. You know, I thought maybe, you know, uh, an owl or something had dive-bombed it, which I've had before. But I turned on my flashlight. I went outside and I looked around. And uh, there was nothing out there. So I went back in, I actually stoked the fire again, just to be sure that uh, it was a big, powerful fire. And yeah, another 15 minutes later, bang. Like, it sounded like somebody's human fist smacking the side of the motorhome. And um, I didn't go out that time to look. I just kind of went to bed and said I'm getting out of here in the morning and when I went to leave in the morning there was a fresh skiff of snow on the ground and I couldn't see any footprints but I could see depressions like where the snow had settled over what would have been possibly footprints but there was nothing anywhere near so the best I could figure was it was some disgruntled old mountain man um, coming down that didn't like me camping in the in that campground or um, yet to be determined creature um, I did google the, the place I was and uh, one of the first things that came up was a Sasquatch sighting in the area but I'm a skeptic um, so I don't know but I got right out of there and I don't plan to go back to uh, I think that was uh, the uh, Strathcona Dam perhaps on Vancouver Island but alright let's zip this up and get to bed and have this scary stuff for tonight Ah, good morning. It's about 6.20 a.m. and uh, believe it or not, the sun's not going to rise for another couple of hours and it's freezing cold. So I'm going to start packing things up and get out of here before the morning rush hour starts and before this uh, condensation in the body bag gets any worse. I'll explain about that in a moment. Oh, it's chilly. Okay, so the deal is body bags don't breathe because it would be absolutely, totally, completely disgusting if they did. Now, I figured that the amount of perspiration coming off of me wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, very wrong. Um, this sleeping bag is like saturated. Look at that. Because it is right around freezing, so 32 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. And as soon as any of that perspiration hit the cold outside of this body bag, yeah, it actually is a lot worse than nothing at all. So I'm going to uh, start packing this stuff up, get out of here as quickly as I can.
awesome. All cleaned up and we are out of here. Oh wow, there was a frost last night. This grass is crispy. But like my mom always said, don't use a body bag when you're stealth camping or the condensation will become a problem for you. It's an old family saying we had. So I'm just gonna sneak across this slip lane back to the car and I think it's time to get something hot to drink. Just as I left it. All right, the official reading is minus three degrees Celsius or around 26 Fahrenheit. So that explains the coldness. Um, and yeah, I didn't bring my big powerful sleeping bag because it has lofted for so long that I couldn't even fit it in my backpack. I need a compression bag to squish that right back down. But time for a tea, I do believe. And Monopoly's still on, so you know what that means. All right. Hi there, welcome to Muffin Hills. Can I get three today? Oh, hey, uh, could I get uh, an extra large green tea? Extra large green tea? Yeah. How do you take it? Um, just as it is. Just black, okay? Yeah. Okay. That's all. Next note, please. Thank Thanks. you. So I had to make the decision. Do I try and just power through it until the sun comes up? Or do I get a bright and early start to the day? And, uh, yeah, so here we are. Bright and early. Yeah. On the debit. Thanks. Thanks. Right on. So, early bird catches the worm. Here we go. I can see she's making the tea right there. Perfect. So, yeah, um, that was actually kind of a boring stealth camping as far as stealth camping goes. Uh, it was informative though to learn how the body bags perform poorly. Um, hey, thanks. And um, that's the way it goes. If it's a good stealth camping spot, it normally means it's a boring video. There's nobody walking around, there's no dogs coming by, nothing like that. So I do apologize for the lack of um, me frantically trying to hide from people, but that's just a sign of a good location. And uh, yes. If you do like these videos, or you find this unique and interesting, or um, something you would consider watching again, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Um, I've got a big list of stuff to do today, so I'm going to get at it. But uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, hunker down at home, and we'll see you guys next week. We are gonna be hitting the road, hitting the highway, so um, there's going to be a lot more adventures to come. Cheers, everybody.